say of the Titans? Are you winning the Titans game? I have them losing the Titans game. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Who are these <laughs> idiots? <laughs> I don't think I don't think Tennessee's point. offense is good enough to sustain the last ten weeks of the season, let alone the first six. Yeah, I'm not trying to. I'm, like I said, I'm not trying to gain enemies here. I'm just trying to, to speak from this offense. I think is going to start out of the gate slow. Right. The defense, like you said, will start faster. <clears throat> and I understand that. That is the, that will be my first test, though. That that I know no one's going to tout the Tennessee Titans offensive line, but they have three unbelievable studs. They did. Are we counting uh, Saffold in those three studs? Not anymore. <laughs> well, I remember the game in Tennessee is an away game. And you remember the whole Twitter battle over Tennessee Titans <laughs> fans and Bills fans. I'm very curious what kind of Bills caravan it ends up in Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> After you hit that subscribe bell, be sure to head over to Sportscaster and join us every Saturday at 8 a.m. You can give that one a shot again. Before we get started, I do want to point out Legends and Stars at Batavia Downs, legendsandstars.net if you're looking for something to do. Uh, they are uh, massive bills, uh, are going to be there Friday and Saturday, October 25th and 26th. Um, we are going to be there as well. Tons of guys are going to be there. Lots of current Buffalo Bills, lots of former Buffalo Bills um, are all scheduled to be there. So we are going to be there uh, walking around. So come hang out with us. Come come get some autographs. I can't wait. No, oh, I can't so wait. Fun. Can you believe Ricky Williams got rescheduled due to a quote unquote personal unforeseen circumstances? Does this surprise you? Does this surprise you guys? Not me. Lenny Kravitz must be on tour. So by the time this comes out, I just want to, right out of the gate, say thank you to all of you that liked the video, uh, the post game on uh, on Sunday. It was awesome, and then uh, all the wristbands. By the time you <laughs> you guys watch this, all the wristbands will be in the mail yep. to your guys' house. So thank you so much. I'll crazy, crazy. Humbled, very humbled. We're going into a buy four and one. Yeah, I know, right? Isn't it amazing? Those are four and one. And, and, I know this is very interesting, Paul. We said this right after the broadcast. Three out of their five wins, the defense let in eight points, nine points, yeah. seven points. Yep. Very. I think that's a huge, that's a huge That's in, in today's NFL, that's yeah. unprecedented. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that's, it's absolutely amazing what this defense, Leslie Frazier, and his and his uh, his staff, what they've been able to do with this defense. If you had to by the bye week, if you had to pick a defensive MVP, mm -hmm. hard not to pick Edmonds. Hard not yeah. to pick Wallace. Yeah, I agree. I you know who I'd give it to? Who? Lorenzo. Ooh, he's super valuable. Oh my god, offense. super valuable. So much you can do with him. So Matt Mallory on the post game um, says. Uh, Allen had two TD passes against a very good defense. Yards don't matter to me. You're not depending on Allen to get you down the field. You're depending on Allen to use his team effectively, right? To, so you're not asking Allen to win the game for you. You're asking Allen to know when he doesn't need to win the game for you. I know, but usually that sentence... It's not you're, you're not asking him to win it. You're just the second asking part him of that, not to lose it. Yeah, and yeah. you're not doing that either. Here's the great part about the offense that I didn't realize as I was getting upset during the game. Mm -hmm. I know it's going to be a boring offense. Mm -hmm. Yet I still would expect some things because you know the the talent that this kid has. Yeah. Everything that he did today, it's like if he was throwing for like three fifty, mm -hmm. four touchdowns. That's not the construct of this offense. No. It would be no. an anomaly if he did that. This is an offense that you could see on October 6th win a game, a tight game. Mm -hmm. It's a game that you could see. It's an offense you could see on December 6th winning a tight game. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to change anything that he did today. No. Okay. Well, that I guess that's kind of one of my 
while you're mad. One of my problems with it, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is the fact that, yes, you're, you're having a balanced attack right now. That's mm -hmm. what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Very balanced attack. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, how, how do you evolve from that? It's not going to take very long for teams to realize that TJ Yeldon's got two carries in three weeks. That Devin Singletary has ten carries in in the two weeks. in the two weeks that he's played. Yeah. Right. Every time Frank Gore's on the field, Frank Gore finally caught a couple passes today, but check they were downs. just checkdowns, yeah. right? Yeah. So at least it makes it a little less predictable. But every time they line up heavy with Gore in a single back set, you know he's getting the football. Mm -hmm. Tennessee perhaps, didn't miss that. Yeah, but perhaps. You think about the Giants, you think about the Jets, you think about the Bengals, you think about the Titans. I, I thought the Titans were smoking mirrors coming into this game anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, Marietta didn't turn over the ball, yet they're 2-2, two and two and they got killed by their two division opponents. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking about that. Yep. Not killed, but I mean, they lost, is the point. That being said, I think what Dable's trying to do, if I can ever say one nice thing about him, I think he's trying to develop tendencies that he can expose later. So if Gore is on the field, mm -hmm. you're in a heavy set. Allen is amazing at play action. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be the next logical step? Be like, okay, it's third and two. They think we're going to run this. Guess what? Nope. I would have bet my paycheck that he was going to do a naked bootleg at the end of that game. I would have bet my paycheck on that. Well, that's what happened. I go, I know. <laughs> But, I mean, I know that, everyone can that say, play, oh, yeah, Mar, you were going to call that? Like, no, that no. play actually frustrated me quite a bit. And you're let me, and let me about, tell you why. Let me tell so, me. That, that play, I got actually mad tell me why. when I saw that play. Because you have a quarterback who ended last game with a concussion. He's had two QB sneaks up the pipe in your first, you know, in, in the first quarter. One of them on fourth and two, right? Yes. And then you're going to end the game with him taking a naked boot, like, up the sidelines. To take more contact. Well, not only that, if you think about like that, that, but that's what I mean is there, there's two plays right there without even thinking of unnecessary risk that I just don't understand. You didn't need to put Allen fourth and two. You're oh, you're gonna run Allen up the into pipe. The teeth, yeah. Yeah, and then to end the game, you're gonna put Allen on a naked bootleg. Like what? Well, that's unman. It's it's manageable risk, and you're taking severe risk in in letting him do that. I know. Why do that a lot? Realistically, it, it seals the game. Yes, it sealed the game. But literally anything could have happened there. If you think the kid's ready to go, then I, I know a lot of people talk about if he's ready, you play him. If he's ready, you play him. He's your, you, you sent all this, um, you did all this stuff with the draft to try to get the kid. I understand that. My point is this. If you have a more savvy coach, I mean, Dean Pease is awesome, the defensive coordinator. For the uh, Titans, uh, yeah. I have a lot of respect for DPS. That that defense was tough today. It was, but if 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 he would have came off that corner with a corner blitz, that's only responsible for Allen, mm -hmm. and he does that fake, he's dead. Yeah, and or he fumbles. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what I'm saying is, if you had, if there was a difficult, I know that if if or fifths, I'd be drunk. But point being is this: I agree with you in the fact that you don't put him in harm's way. I'm surprised yeah. he actually did call that play. And yeah. I, I would not call that play again. No, no, no. That's not a play you want to use against the Tennessee Titans. All, all, albeit to ice a game, that's a that's a play you want. Now it's on film. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to blitz that side and hit Allen. Right. Well, and and again, to be perfectly frank, it was tough Hi, for frank. me. What? Hi, Frank. Oh my God! Just drive its green light. It was challenging for me to. What's the best way for me to phrase this? It was challenging for me to understand some of the logic that went into some of the play calls, right? Even though you went against a very tough Tennessee defense, you did, you went against a very tough Tennessee defense, you saw again this offense without Devin Singletary is simply not explosive. You saw Dawson Knox come away with two receptions for 12 yards on five targets, right? Yes. You didn't really see any outside presence in the run game until the end of the game where they started they did that little shovel pass to McKenzie and then they ran a jet with Roberts yeah right I kind of expected to see that a little earlier through in the, the game. A gap I cannot believe that Andre Roberts said oh let me just go where the fat guys are I love let me just run where the fat guys are like what a great a, idea like that's any different than what he does on kickoff return anyway <laughs> that's true let me go right that's in here true. come on here we go 
Well, I think looking at Jarrell Casey is a lot different than looking at like their long snapper. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, is it a rule that long snappers aren't supposed to wear anything on their arms? That's a good point. Go I've never seen a it. long snapper unless that's a good point. Unless when it gets cold, they have one Under Armour and that's it. No wristbands, no nothing, no tape, nothing. That's a that's a great that's a great point. Reed, if I you guess. watch this, can you answer that for us, please? Yeah, seriously, come on, Reed. Reed looks like the creative player in Madden when he come out. He's got nothing on him. He just. <laughs> I love Reed Ferguson. I do. Friend of the friend yeah. of the Rock Power Report. Yeah, Snap Flow sixty nine. <laughs> What a great, what a great Twitter follow. That is you, a great. Reed is a great Twitter follow. You really can't. He doesn't post a lot, but what he does post is just it's very, it's very tasteful. Yes, yeah, it's very, funny. very tasteful for somebody with Snapflow sixty nine <laughs> as a Twitter handle. So I want to go back and look at the drive summaries. Sure. So, okay, ready? Here we go. We're gonna look at Buffalo's drive summaries. Here we First go. half, second half. You or uh, yeah, here we go. Ready? Yep. So Bills, four play, 22 yards, punt. 11 plays, 45 yards. That was the fourth and two. Yes. Where they gave it up on downs. Yep. Five plays, 17 yards, punt. Six plays, 10 yards, punt. Six plays, 60 yards, touchdown. So that was, um, so the plays that ended up moving the ball were as follows. Uh, short left to John Brown. Uh, short left to TJ Yeldon. Gore left guard for two yards, third and four, short left to Duke Williams for 11. That's really where that, that's, that was a big play. It was? That was a big play. Um, first and 10 at the Tennessee 29, because remember, they took over at the Buffalo 40, so they got good field position here. Mm -hmm. Josh Allen hits uh, John Brown deep for 21, takes it to the eight, and that's the Lee Smith touchdown. So... Two plays really that broke that open: the John Brown catch and the Duke Williams catch. And that was a tough Duke Williams uh, uh, John Brown catch. It was a nasty. It was a very that tough was a catch. Nasty one. I think Allen he like he looked to his first read, second read, and then he just launched it over by the sideline. Yep, it was a hell of a catch. Yeah, it was. It was awesome. So if my quick maths are right here, you got 84 yards. Whoa, whoa. You got 94 yards. Did you just pull out Big Shack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quick, quick maths. Quick maths. Um, you got 94 yards on 6, 11, 22, uh, 20, uh, 22, 4, 26 plays. How many No yards? points. Prior to that. Prior to the touchdown. Yeah. That touchdown or that drive? That prior to the touchdown drive. You had 26 plays for? 90, 85, 90 yards. Right around there. So ballpark, 85, 90 yards. I think. But the, here's, that's broken up between one, two, three, four drives. 26 plays in four drives. None of them three and outs. None of them were three and outs. That's that's the thing I think is the main focus of that, though. I mean, if you want to okay. take a positive we'll take out that. of that, they're, they're controlling the clock. They're controlling the ball. Some things are working. We talked about the script that Dable has. I mean, he started well, the game with only four, four uh, it was a four and out. That's, that's an interesting point that you bring that up because Tennessee at that point, their drive that took the longest – took three minutes and 17 seconds off the clock. That's one first down. That was, right, that was one missed field goal. So their longest drive was three minutes and 17 seconds. They missed a field goal. Wow. That was their longest drive. The Bills' shortest drive was their first at two minutes and 27 seconds. So if, and that's not a really a recipe you can keep up the whole year. Uh, that's just, that's my point. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's, right. that's where I thought I you were just go. examining the bills. I was just examining the bills and saying, listen, all right, you, do you, did they have any three and outs? Uh, I mean, the interception, and they did open the quarter three and out. Okay, all right. So you're talking about the defensive model against the Tennessee Titans. They can't sustain that many three and outs on a team and hold them right. down that much. Right. Um, how long was the touchdown drive? Touchdown drive was 60 yards. They got out at the 40. And then the second touchdown drive. But what uh, wasn't, Bills, that a, wasn't there a Henry long run on that? Or what, who, who, got, no. who had a long pass? That was John Brown. No, no, no. I'm talking about the Titans. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. On the Titans touchdown, seven plays, 38 yards. Oh. So that was after the pick. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So if you don't give up the ball in your own zone, you may have a shutout there. Yeah. Is it, okay. Yep. Yep, yep. <laughs> So if today wasn't a microcosm of Josh Allen, 
and simply stating, simply stating, you don't turn the ball over, we won't give up any points. Right. Not that that's going to be a theme for the rest of the year. I understand right. that. But you see the direct effect of that. They were able to come down and tie the game. Right. And then you had to play hero ball again in fourth mm-hmm. quarter, well, which wasn't really hero ball. They were just they were just stringing plays together. He was had very simple play concepts. Sometimes even two just two guys in the row. Yep. So I, there's something to be said about getting first downs on drives, even if they're not successful. Yes, there is. Right. That's and the right. Bills were able to do that in the first half. Mm-hmm. They got a first down on every single drive except for the one play that they ran to run out the clock on, at the end of the quarter. You just eliminate that. It, it was a non. It was a non-possession, in my opinion. Yeah. But they yep. started the first half, three plays, zero zero yards, punt. Next possession, three plays, five yards, interception. The next. Uh, the next possession that they had, right, yep. six plays, 77 yards for that touchdown. So they were able to respond right. after a pick. But then they went three and out the next drive, and then the final drive was nine plays. So here's what I see there. Defensive adjustments, Bill's lack of ability to adjust. Because you went three and out on one, two, three out of your final five possessions. Ooh. The defense was on the field too much. In that second half, then is what you're saying. Mm, no, Tennessee's drives really. I mean, they were they weren't super long. I'm just saying that the defensive adjustments that Tennessee made against the Bills' offense, the Bills' offense didn't adjust appropriately. They were able to get it together for a touchdown run, but that was six plays, 77 yards. I mean, that's. So is that your worry? The lack of ability to adjust, hundred percent. It kind of you know breaks my heart because we talked about. You know, we loved uh, the ability of the Bills and the pro personnel department to get their stuff together yeah. at halftime, and yeah. I'm just not seeing that. No, you're not seeing it. It's It seems like they're being out-schemed by their opponents mm-hmm. and the halftime adjustments they're doing. But, like, can Bills fans take solace in the fact that they're still learning this offense and they have a lot of new parts? Yeah, I, I mean, guess. it should have been a tra- – they shouldn't have scored twice. No. Or no, they shouldn't have scored in the second half when you lose your starting right tackle yeah. and your starting center. Yeah. Usually that just uh, crumbles a team, sure. and it didn't because the Bills had already had contingency plans in place for this. Right. You trade Eli Harrell for Ryan Bates, yep. and then you have Feliciano taking snaps all through camp because... At center, because yeah. Morris was out. And you know what? Talk about under an underrated performance by Spencer Long. I know. I mean, wow. That's yep. why you got him. So... We get Spencer Long and the Jets get Connor McDermott. Like, <laughs> fair. That's I mean, fair. But it, it it just brings to light a bunch of other things. But I, as far as I understand, but looking forward, and what Bills fans have to have to realize is that there's really only one place this offense can go. They can get better. Because I, they're not scoring a lot of points. No, they're not. But they're true. not giving up a lot. You know what I mean? No. If, if you look at the NFL average, I think. Any other team that didn't have this defense would probably be one and four, I or think two and three. You know what I, mean? I think that's probably pretty close to reasonable, unless you're in the AFC East because <laughs> you're beating the Jets and the Dolphins only scoring seven. That's just the truth. I can't wait till after the bye and we have another bye. 